Welcome back to the Primal Lab. Um, so today, uh, I'm excited to share with you a very powerful way of moving through the world. And this is a, I guess you can call it a technique or, you know, a, um, a practice that <clears throat> I was taught from by uh, Tom Brown Jr. It was passed on from Grandfather Stocking Wolf. And he refers to it as fox walking. And so, um, you know, when I first learned this, it seemed like, you know, it was a cool way to kind of move in a gentle and quiet way that um, seemed really, really simple, actually. You know, I'd been barefoot most of my life already, and it, it kind of made sense. But uh, as I've continued to fox walk throughout my life, and... Um, found it to be a very powerful teacher in, in many ways. So, um, so I'm just, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's more, more available to this. It's not hard. It is actually natural, but it's, um, it's very deep, you know, and my, like many of these, these tools and, and ways are. So, uh, it's, to me, it, it reserves its it has its own place. It's a whole class, basically, on fox walking because it, it ties in so many things. And uh, Grandfather Stocking Wolf referred to fox walking as um, walking where every step is a prayer. So it's it's really a sacred practice, you know. It's a way of tapping into our baseline human movement pattern as it connects to um, the earth. So this is like our baseline way of, of moving. This is our, our foundation, you know. So much like uh, wide-angle vision is our foundational way of seeing. So 80% of the time or more, you know, you may be in wide-angle vision and then tunnel in as you need to, but with fox walk, 80% of the time you'll be moving in fox walk throughout your life. And, um, what happens when you start to pattern that in is you're able to make contact with your world as you move through it and you you start to make contact with the journey and not what we you know just think of as the destination only you know so you're able to make contact with the journey um, and the process of moving through life so getting kind of philosophical but so the fox walk is a <clears throat> uh, a basic way of moving, and it's kind of there's going to be a lot of different ways that we move. And this one is just kind of like when you don't have another way to move, this is how you move, <laughs> okay? And um, so you need to know that this is meant to be natural. This isn't something that's supposed to be uh, difficult or like contrived or or anything like that. This is going to be a, a very natural way of being and it it takes um takes a little time to deprogram our normal way of walking so for the most part modern humans are pretty means to end oriented in their movement which means that um we're focused on the destination we're focused on the task you know we're not really focused on the quality of our experience in achieving the task which is another way of saying we're focused on the destination not the journey so, so the destination is important, but I want to bring, I want to elevate the journey in our training because you have lots of practice and in, in the means to end type of living. That's our Western, that's our culture. You know, that's how we've been, that's our world now. So, um, to awaken this other way that honors process and journey, the fox walk. You know, those things need to be. It's helpful if you understand that way of thinking or that philosophy that goes with this walk. Otherwise it becomes just kind of this mechanical means to end <laughs> walk that you're still trying to pull off. So um, so it's called the fox walk because uh, if you have observed foxes moving, uh, I remember one time I was down at the river and we don't, I mean we have foxes here but I don't see them a lot. I mean maybe it's just my lack of being in the right place at the right time or whatever, but they just don't seem to be that common. I don't see a lot of their tracks and stuff. But one time I was down at the river in the, at night and or early, you know, late evening, 
the moon was out. And uh, we, I was down on a riverbed where there was, <clears throat> kind of, I was sitting under a tree and there's this uh, riverbed where in our rivers there's these big cobbles, these big like kind of from boulder size down to like small size, but roundish river rock, right? And some of them, they're just kind of scattered and they're kind of unstable. When you step on them, they might flip over or, I'll just put it this way, it's, it's a challenging environment to run through <laughs> or even walk through barefooted. Um, one of my trainings in the past has been learning how to run through those, um, those riverbeds, uh, sprinting, you know, in bare feet. And it puts you in a really cool state to do that. So, but that comes from fox walk practice. So, so anyway, I was down at the river and I noticed you know, this movement, because I was in wide angle vision, I noticed this movement out of the corner of my eye that was snake-like. It was like coming in from, you know, downstream a little bit, and this is a dry riverbed. And so the moonlight's shining down, there's shadows and stuff, but there's a really good stretch of, of moonlight. And I see this creature moving in a way that I, I was just like, what? what is that? What moves like that, you know? And it was uh, moving pretty fast, kind of flowing right it looked like water really and I started to realize I'm like wow it looks like a little cat dog what oh it's a fox you know because I haven't seen one here my brain finally registered what it was but it paused and then it would continue going and pause and continue going right and every time it moved it looked like its body was just floating just kind of hovering along right and I could see see in the moonlight its little feet kind of moving underneath its body, perfectly placed so that its body could just be still and, and glide uh, while the feet were positioning where they needed to go. Now he was moving fast. This was a fox run or a fox, you know, <laughs> scamper, but it was not, it wasn't a fox walk. Um, so that was, that was a real gift to see that, especially after I'd been training the fox walk for so long. Um, but if you've seen cats move, it's a similar principle, you know, um, if you watch a cat, how they are very deliberate about how they place their feet and about how, how they, uh, you know, they're very uh, graceful. They're very intentional in their walk. You, you don't see them bounce, except for if they're, they're trotting because they're happy and they're trying to come in or something. But when they're exploring, you know, when they're in their little cat mode <laughs> or hunting, it's very smooth and very deliberate in their, in their body. They're not doing a lot of up and down motion. So... So you can think of it as a catwalk too, if you want. Watch cats. So, um, but anyway, when this how this translates to people is there's a few basic technical, uh, there's a form to it, there's a technical concepts I wanna get across, but just a few. And, um, and then you're just gonna have to practice this on your own. So, and I'll include a little video. You'll, you'll see a little instruction on how to do this too. So, the fox walk works for all different types of terrain until you get to very thick, thick, thick terrain where, you know, brush or jungly almost like around here, where you have to move more into a full body kind of flow or, or more of a stalking mode. But if you think about it, back to the, the cat and the fox, both of them are predators. And as are we, we are, you know, predators and prey, we're, we're both. But those animals, um, are very conscious about their noise because they have to sneak up on stuff, right? So part of the intention, or part of the, the function of the fox walk is to reduce your noise. Along with that, it also reduces your disturbance, which is similar. I mean, noise is a result of disturbance, you know? Um, so your disturbance could be visual though, like tracks. So it minimizes your tracks because you're not breaking stuff and damaging the ground so much. You're you're gently laying tracks, which means there's less noise, right? So if you've ever seen a slow motion picture of like a big cat, like a lion or a tiger or something stalking on National Geographic, it's just awesome. You can see their paws come down. Let's just pretend these are paws. And they bring them up and they like kind of pull them uh, in a little bit or they tip them up a little bit and they come down on this edge here and then they roll to the flat, right? They come up and they set down that edge and they roll and they roll and so that rolling motion um, it's a way of allowing your foot to contact the ground and, and you have some contact with what's there 
before you compress the ground and before you shift your weight. So those are kind of like the steps um, that you take. So the, the process. So you're going to go through these these different steps. So, uh, but let's start with the body mechanics first. So first of all, to do the basic fox walk, you want to be standing vertical and relaxed and you want to start by looking at the horizon. We're not going to stare at our feet. It's okay if you need to look down at first to just see how you're, if you can't feel your feet to notice what they're doing. And first of all, I want to say this is best done without your shoes. So um, if you can, take your shoes off. Just make sure it's safe on the ground and all that. You can do this inside too, doesn't matter. But um, so if you're barefoot, your feet are going to give you tons of information, first of all. They're going to help you do this. And one of the ways that I actually start people fox walking, especially kids, is just invite them to take off their shoes. And you'll find very quickly that a barefoot human, especially if you're not conditioned, um, will start to find the fox walk where at least the, the uh, body mechanics, the basic body mechanics, pretty quick. Um, normal walk in unknown terrain. Normal walk for humans or uh, modern humans as I was going to say, it was is more of a controlled fall, you know. We pitch forward with our, our, our weight, throw a leg out there, boom, catch, and it's a heel strike to foot flop, bang, 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 right? Um, it's pounding, it's jarring, it sends out waves of disturbance, and, it's, and it creates a lot of big tracks. And because you're in a committed fall, once you're in motion, it's really hard to adjust your foot and put it in a spot that, let's say there's a branch or a leaf or a slug or something on the ground you don't want to step on it's hard to make that choice it's hard to redirect so um, back to the mechanics of the fox walk how we avoid the controlled fall is we stand vertical and we're always in balance think about a cat Have you ever seen a cat fall over <laughs> no you know they don't do that they even if you try to sweep out a cat's foot out from under him with your hand or something, they'll immediately, they're just gonna like replace them immediately, right? Um, cats don't fall over. They're always balanced. They always have a good base under them. So you wanna be balanced at all times through this whole walk. So this is where it differs from the modern human walk. Um, the, so we do that by being aware of your center, which we'll talk about. But to start with, very simply, just imagine Across from your hip bones, where they basically where your belt is, and your center. If you if you went back inside of your body a little bit and found your center back in there, uh, that's your center. And you want to be aware of your center of gravity, which is where your center is in relation to the the Earth center. And so you just can feel that. And when your center of gravity moves out too far outside of your body from leaning, you tend to have to adjust or fall over. So we want to. Um, keep that center of gravity right under your actual center. And if that's confusing, don't worry about it. You know how to balance. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you're standing there barefoot and you're going to be vertical, looking at the towards the horizon in wide angle vision, preferably, and feel your feet. Feel how they're touching the ground. You're gonna pick up one foot and you're going to lift it just high enough that you will clear whatever terrain you're in. So if I'm in the grass here, the grass here is like, you know, four to six inches tall here and there. Um, my foot would come high enough that I'm going to clear the grass before I, I bring it back down, right? I don't want to drag it through the grass. Okay? So you're going to pick your foot up and slightly, um, I'm showing this with my hands, I'm actually going to show you on the video, but um, slightly point your toes as you do this and um, you're going to be walking in a in a line so here's uh, imagine these are my feet right next to each other okay so when I walk I want to walk in a way that my foot falls back down on the same line center line right next to each other right and the other one does the same thing and I'm always on the kind of straddling that line so in tracking terms we call the distance between your feet or the tracks we call that straddle so this is going to be zero straddle it means you're on the same line it's not going to be negative straddle by the way so you don't want to be like 
walking on a tightrope kind of thing, where you're on the same line, same center line, you're actually just naturally right next to each other, okay? Now, when you do that, it's going to, if you pick up your foot, you know, you're gonna have to stand on one leg for a sec, and that means you're gonna have to shift your balance over, so now you're fully standing on that leg. And then you're gonna reach out with your foot comfortably, and you're gonna to touch the ground with a part of your foot, and I'll show you on my foot. The first thing that's gonna to touch is right there, okay? It's the outside edge pad. It's not the ball of your foot. It's on the outside edge of the front of your foot. He's gonna to touch the ground first. And you're gonna feel, before you commit your weight or take that actual step or shift, you're just gonna to touch. So it's just like when you're walking blindfolded and you reach out and you, you feel something before you move forward, you know, your hands are kind of out. You're doing that with your feet. You're reaching out gently, touching the ground lightly. I'm slowing it down. And then you're gonna roll your foot from that pad I showed you towards the inside of your foot. So you're gonna go outside edge pad and roll it in. You'll see it in the video. Once you've rolled in that foot and you feel everything that's below your foot, just to check it out, it might be if you're trying to be quiet, you know, is there a dead leaf there? Is there anything under your feet? When you feel good about that step and you've made contact with that step, remember our talk on contact. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Um, then you're going to move your weight and shift forward. Now you shift forward and move your center of gravity, which is naturally going to lift your back foot. You're going to lift that one up in the same way, kind of letting the toes point downward, clearing the landscape, gently finding your way into a new foot position, and then rolling from outside edge to inside, shifting your weight, right? So if you watch, you know, back to the videos about big cats, if you watch them, it really is helpful to see how they move and give you some sense of that, or just watch your own cat if you have one, um, and, and watch how these animals are always balanced and they're touching they're touching the earth and making contact before they're shifting their weight they're not striking the earth that is probably one of the biggest distinctions it's walking with connection it's moving with connection so you always have awareness you always have balance and you always have connection um, so you know that's basically it and and you want to feel like you're moving from your center so at first you're just gonna be standing there kind of tall um, human-like, you know, you're not trying to sneak, unless you're trying to sneak, but for now, just to get used to this, be relaxed, stand vertical, you're going to relax everything in your body that isn't being used for walking, and that's most of your body. So this isn't going to be a walk, unless it's done a little faster, necessarily, where your arms are going to swing big time. Um, there are speeds where that happens, and it is natural, but I'm slowing you down a little bit to a slow fox walk to learn this, and, um, when you get this down, you know, this will be a speed, say, where each step takes about um, three to five seconds. Okay, not, not real long, but kind of long for a step um, after you start moving and cruising. And then you can slow it way down. In fact, if you get into a stalking mode, you're slowing it all the way down to like a minute per step, which is slow, right? When you go slower than a minute per step, by the way, then animals have a hard time seeing you. They won't, you kind of just, eh, even if they're looking right at you, they won't really perceive your motion. So, um, so we're moving at a speed that's slower than a normal walk um, and mechanically very different. And then um, the strides will be slow, shorter, naturally. Uh, and you can, it, what, one thing this does is it frees up your awareness so you don't look at where you're stepping because you're feeling where you're stepping. You can, you can use those senses, you can use your feet. And then you can look around. And what happens actually with some practice is your, your, your eyes do map on the, the terrain, especially if you have a route of travel, a trail or something that you're gonna go down. Your eyes will take in the information and your feet will remember it, kind of future pace it, and they will put, you know, they will go in the right spots without looking, it's really cool. So this is a great way to move if you want to be careful and moving barefoot and don't want to hurt your feet so you can feel the ground and is that pokey or is that dangerous, you know, and then readjust and, and move it again before you shift your weight. So anyway, so the fox walk is, uh, 
you know, a powerful way to move in connection with the earth. And this is just the beginning of it. And I hope you uh, give it a good shot. And once you get comfortable with it, you can try it at different speeds. Again, always recommend slow. We're moving, we're, we're aiming for smooth. Oh, there's one more thing I want to mention is there's no up and down motion. So a lot of times when you see people walking, there's kind of like this up and down motion in their head, dun -dun, dun -dun, right? Like a trot in an animal. But um, we're going to slow it down and just glide. So what it would look like is like you're just scooting by on a skateboard, just rolling by. You ever watch a, a kid just kind of cruise by on a skateboard? Um, that's what it kind of looks like. So there's a gliding motion which means your feet move under you. Remember the fox, the feet are moving under you while your body is moving. So there's gonna be a lot of action in your hips and um, legs and core, but relatively low action up in your upper body. This is partly to um, conceal your movement. You know, uh, this goes back to survival and, and needing to be either predator or prey and, or hide. So. Um, it's a gentler movement. The bouncy movement has a quality in nature of kind of giving a certain signal of um, it draws attention to it, you know, and there's a certain like uh, anyway, what you want to do with the you just want to minimize your bouncing. Things, birds, you know, creatures are going to notice that kind of bouncing motion. The, the gliding motion is less a little less uh, of a break in the baseline out there. So, um, and remember to pause. That's the other thing. You don't have to just keep walking in a certain tempo. Bam, 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 bam. No. You walk in a rhythm that's dictated by the earth and the landscape. Especially if you're trying to blend in and not disrupt everything. You may need to pause where the robins are kind of feeding and looking at you. And just meet them with a little bit of honoring and allow them to, you know, get that last worm before they take off. Um, and other times it'll be slow, other times it'll be quicker. So, so play around with it. Um, check out the instructional video and I hope you enjoy the fox walk. Thanks for playing. Take care and keep going.